when I first came in here, I was like, uh, how am I going to compete with Ezel? I can smell Ezel from like in here. And so, um, so, but once I got to doing what I do and going through the motions of, of preparing the food and stuff, and I see the kids are pretty much in tune to what they like, and I try to make it look as, as appealing as possible. So when they see it, because if it looks good, it's probably going to taste good as well. That's one of the main goals I my entire culinary career. So it's to make the food, not only does it look appealing to the eye, but it also tastes as well as it looks. Hi, my name is Chef Emmy, and I am the district chef for Seattle Public Schools. As the district chef, I oversee all the menu creation, recipe development, um, working with vendors to bring all the products in, and overseeing the central kitchen production. So obviously, when the pandemic hit, all of our schools shut down, but um, culinary services was still charged with the responsibility of feeding, providing food um, to our students, um, and really actually became our community as well. So the initial shutdown and that whole like first year, our numbers increased, and I think that the trust and bond between us, our um, frontline workers, which are our kitchen managers and the community, like really grew really, really strong. Um, but now with this new school year, we're facing a whole nother challenge that, you know, it's like nationwide challenge of supply chain shortage. You know, we're ordering food, we're being shorted. A lot of the, the top quality items that we were buying are not being produced. So um, that's been a challenge, but that has also helped because we've been able to do a lot more scratch cooking, which is exactly where the direction where we want to go. So actually this year, I also um, kind of started a program that I'm calling Taste of SPS, where each month I'm putting, creating a dish um, that is based on local produce to support like local farms. Today we're in Coopville at the Sherman Pioneer Farms where we got our sugar Hubbard squash for our delicious squash soup. This right here is the field where the squash was harvested um, and we're going to head in and talk to the farm owners to learn a little bit more about the farm, about the squash because it's a really, really special squash that has an incredible story behind it and I can't wait for y'all to hear about it. Everything is done primitively. How's that? Yeah, so, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. But, so, it, but it works. It yeah. works for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, clear back to when you start with the seed drying. You know, most people have these big fancy seed dryers and they do all this and they do that. Ours is in an old dairy gold milk truck <laughs> with, a, you know, with a couple of burners and some screens. Hey. It works. I like you know, the old my dad way. started the thing up and it works and yeah. we laughed at it and we're still doing it. Like why, why fix it if it ain't broke? So this is um, clear to the back wall and on the sides. All of this is sugar hubbard squash. There's about a hundred tons in here. So we have all of these squash inside of here. They continue to ripen inside of this straw. After World War II, my husband's father and the University of um, WSU, Washington State, they got together. This squash was developed for the longevity. The skin is really tough but the inside is from a sweet meat, and the sweet meats are the sweetest of the Hubbard squashes. So we realized back in the early 2000s that a whole squash is really difficult. Moms are running here with their kids, and dads are going to that soccer practice, and, and so they weren't getting the food value that they really needed. So we have 10 pound bags, we have five pound bags, and we have um, containers. To get a cubed product like this, they put it on here and they slice it, they peel it with the bandsaw. It goes into here and it comes out down here cubed.
When did you guys plant the seed for the Sugar Hubbard squad? May. May. Yep. Okay. Dale's dad always said by the 5th of May. By the 5th But it May. depends on the weather. <laughs> so the 5th of May, um, it should be in the ground. Dale plants on, a, he develops a grid, and the grids um, cross at every six feet. Okay. So then you plant in the cross spot. All by hand. All by hand. I spent a week at a farm this past summer. I did a program for chefs of color, and it was like such like a cathartic experience. Like even me as a chef, like I cook with food all, all the time. I'm like buying, I buy local, I buy from my farmers. I go to farmer's market, but spending that week at that farm and actually like digging up my produce from the dirt. Like I feel like when I looked at the dirt and I saw that potato, my brain did like a little spaz because I'm, you know, you're so used to seeing potatoes in the market, but like to see it in the dirt, it was like, wait, what's going on here? Um, but having that process of actually, you know, touching our, seeing where it comes from, touching it with our hands, harvesting it with, with our hands, bringing it in, cleaning it up, creating the dish and like sitting down with our community to eat it. That whole process was the most amazing experience that I've had in my life, seriously. And I want the kids to experience that because I think it's so important for them to understand where food comes from, what it actually really looks like when it's growing. This is growing for you to, to like provide you nutrition. They will, they will come in and like they'll come through here and everything. And so they'll, they ask me, I'll, I'll let them know like, hey, this is, uh, we got the coconut squash soup here. It's really tasty. I enjoy it. It's plus it's good for the, the weather that's outside right now. It's nice and cold. You need some soup for you. Through this Taste of SPS um, project that we're doing, where I'm creating these dishes that are centered around our local um, farmers' produce, and we're out there, you know, meeting the farmers. They're able to talk about their stories. They're able to show us the process of like how it grows, how they process it, and like ship it to us, and talk to our kitchen managers that are receiving these local goods and creating this dish and serving it to the students. So really having that like full circle moment for them to all understand like the process, I think is super important. And I really think it may make a difference. It really made a difference for me. So I know that it'll make a difference for like the kids and the communities to really like understand about food. Find out what's new about SPS Culinary Services at www.seattleschools.org forward slash culinary services.